Welcome everybody on today's episode of Pinch House Garage. We're working on the Jetta. You guys can see. We already got it on jack stands. We already got the wheels off. We did that just so I can make our lives a little bit easier. Um, now here, uh, what we're going to be doing today is very, very important. So, we're going to be inspecting the engine bay and then tearing down the whole front end of the car and then inspecting the front of the engine. As we do that, we're going to do a full visual, um, I guess, treatment of what is going on here and what we see in this engine bay because of how old this car is. And we're going to pull the engine. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy, going to be fun. So now, the very, very important part here is what do you need tool-wise? Huh, Alonzo? What do you think we need for tools? Hmm. <laughs> it's okay. Wrench? We need wrenches. We need sockets. We need Phillips screwdrivers. We need flathead screwdrivers. We need a jack. We need a cherry picker. We need a dolly. I like cherries. I know. I like cherries, too. We need a dolly. Uh, and we need a lot of patience because this is a never-been-touched engine bay. So... That being said, there's a lot of stuff we have to be very, very careful with because we can break things easily, easily because very old. Uh, it's plastic, so plastic breaks a lot. Uh, since this is a first generation uh, Mark IV VR6, this has the uh, plastic intake manifold, uh, not a metal one. Um, so we got to be very careful not to damage it because these things are very expensive to find hard to find nowadays for this style intake manifold um, as you can see where he took the engine cover off it's just a couple torques not a big deal so let's get to work because this is PGL's garage <laughs> Since we're going live and we're filming everything as well, uh, so what's going? What we're going to do first is, I yesterday I took out the uh, sock, uh, the spark plugs out of here, and I wanted to do some inspection on the spark plugs. And what I found out is that they are soaked in oil. If you guys can see that, all of them were soaked like this. So that's a valve cover gasket failing. Um, CV shafts, yes, definitely have to be removed. So, that's not a good sign. Um, whether or not, again, when was the last time this car drove, I don't know. Um, but it's definitely not the best sign right now so far. So what I ended up doing was I pulled all the spark plugs out. And then I filled in, I put uh, some uh, lubricating oil into each cylinder to see if I can break loose the uh, the engine if it is seized so I'm gonna go grab a, um, a breaker bar and we're gonna see if we can turn the engine now so I'll be right back so using a uh, 27 millimeter socket be careful with the cables okay we're gonna see if we can turn the engine by hand and see if there's anything that goes on but I don't think I can turn it I think this engine is legitimately seized yeah so I can't turn it no big deal Whew. what are these um, so they're super simple which really cool in a VR they have these clipping right here um, so when you put them in they just go in and you push down and clip and then when you pull them out just like that okay come on papa you can help me pull them out 
super easy. Now, if you guys want to label them and everything, by all means label them, but it's not going to matter to us. Um, because we're going to learn how to time these guys. We're going to learn how to use the firing order on the ignition coil down the road. This is something that we're all going to learn together. So, again, super easy. Pull up and they pop out and your spark plugs are all here. Um, super easy um, to get out. Now, the next thing is we're going to do a rundown of what we see here in the engine bay. Uh, one thing that you guys got to understand is knowing what's in your engine bay in a VR6. Um, they're not the same as a Mark uh, as a 1.8T. There's a lot of different components, um, pretty much from here over here. All right. So pretty much in this engine proportion, I know it's kind of like, oh, but it's a VR6. Yeah, but there's different parts in here, um, and there's a lot of weird little things that you're going to learn that are very different from a 1.8T. Uh, so number one, what we just pulled out, we don't have spark plug wires. Okay. On a mark on a 1.8T, this car actually has spark plug wires, um, but in comparison to like a 1.8, um, they have a coil on plug which goes on the uh, cylinder. Uh, these guys, the coil is actually separate. It's actually right here. It's an electronic coil. Uh, it uses the crank sensor to obviously the, uh, to fire to give you a firing order. So it's this block right here, guys. So I'm gonna get you guys all up and close and personal. So. Give me a second here, so you guys can see this block right here is your ignition coil. You can see that all the wires are plugged right into that. Okay. Now then the next thing is this tube. This is your secondary air injection. Okay. And that goes into your intake. Now right over here, this is a secondary water pump. Now this water pump stays on while the car is actually off uh, to keep the engine cooling um, while it's sitting. This is actually a super, super important part of a VR6, okay? Um, because a VR6s are much, much hotter running engines than a 1.8T. So these um, have to be replaced every couple years uh, to keep making sure that your engine block cools down as it sits. Uh, if we move on over, uh, this black piece right here is the breather. Uh, you'll have, you'll see, it goes right back into the intake right here, and this is the uh, smog portion of your system here. Uh, this is the breather valve, and there's a PCV right here, and there's a sensor right here that controls I idle air temperature. This guy right here is the idle air temp sensor. Now we have a throttle body right over here. This is the throttle body sensor. Now you'll see all these vacuum lines right here attached to it. That runs all the way over to your smog system uh, or your aka the uh, charcoal canister if you guys see this vacuum line right over here this is all part of your smog system um, very very important to, to know that because if you guys are keeping your car smog legal uh, you got to make sure all these lines are 100 percent intact um, this line right here this plastic one that comes off the brake booster this is the vacuum line for the brake booster these are for your power brakes That's correct, Tracy. Um, so, again, uh, right here, you have your fuel pressure regulator, vacuum controlled. If you run over here, the vacuum lines run all the way underneath the car and underneath the intake manifold. Uh, underneath your intake, down to your intake manifold. Um, let's see what else we see on top. Uh, that's common on 1.8T is your, your main relays. Your brake booster, brake uh, reservoir. Um, so you got that. Uh, obviously, your battery and your fuse box that sit right here. That right there is your dipstick for your oil. Uh, intake manifold. Let's see, what else do we see that's on top that's super obvious? Uh, oh, right here. These are your fuel lines. This is where you get gasoline, Lonzo. Um, for your car so you have the intake you have a feed and return um, everybody knows what this is and this is and this this is a pretty common parts but coolant ball power steering and your wiper let's see what else we got here well we have our tensioner this is our uh, idle tensioner for the accessory belt um, and then obviously all the belts underneath um, AC that's for your AC 
Uh, let's see right here. We got our upper radiator here. Oh, one thing that you guys got to know about the, uh, uh, yeah, the waterfall tray over here on the right. One thing that's super important that you guys need to know about VR6s too, they have two radiators. Okay? A lot of people didn't know that, but there's two radiators in this car, and that's what this metal line is for. If you guys see where my finger's touching, right here, if we follow that, there's a metal line that goes across and down, and there's a second little radiator down here behind the, uh, your intake scoop. Um, yeah, there's spiders too, lots of spiders. <laughs> um, we're going to teach you guys how to delete all that. We're going to actually do a shaved engine bay in this car. Um, we're going to show you guys how to do all of that while we uh, take care of this car as well. We're going to show you how to delete that. We're going to delete everything on the left. We're going to do a clean, clean battery location, custom intake. Uh, we're going to get rid of everything pretty much and get, make this thing look beastly and look super clean. Okay. So uh, we're going to get rid of the battery right now. This battery is really old and it's probably defective and it's been sitting way too long. So it's not a big deal. Um, down below, this is going to be a little bit harder to see, but right here is the, I guess the coolant system, uh, like uh, system down here. You'll see there's a upper radiator hose, there's a plug, and then there's a sensor. There's a coolant temp sensor there. Um, these cars are extremely notorious for having their pipes um, break, uh, and they're extremely hard to get to. They're such a pain to replace and do maintenance right here, uh, because everything's actually underneath the intake manifold. Um, and uh, Croms, yes, these cars come from the factory with two radiators. Uh, again, the little radiator sits on the side, it looks like a little intercooler. Uh, and and honestly, they do require them uh, if you're going to stay 100% stock. Uh, since we're going to go full aftermarket and we're going to show you guys how to um, bypass all of that, uh, we're going to be upgrading the radiator to a, a double row uh, radiator with upgraded fans. So we don't need to worry about the single radiator. We're going to learn how to bypass all of this stuff and clean everything. We'll show you guys, you know. Ta-da. Ta-da. Hey, Alonzo got the... Got all the spiders out, <laughs> all the webs. Uh, oh, one more thing right here. Forgot to mention back here. Um, so we're talking about the uh, fuel. Um, uh, this is a fuel pressure regulator uh, vacuum line. This one right here is, let me see here. Um, this is the one for your uh, charcoal canister. Um, it goes over here to the left. And you'll see right here, this is all part of your smog system. So this is all your recirculation of all your vapor, fuel vapors. Uh, and that's what these lines are for right here. Again, very similar to a 1.8T, uh, just with the big, much bigger engine inside. <laughs> um, if we look down below, uh, you can see that the coolant uh, was already leaking in this car. Already had a leaky coolant. Uh huh. Right here, it was leaking coolant. Right here, see this? See how it's white? No. Right here. But it's not like blue. Right now, we're gonna be. My nephew here, Alonzo, is taking out the screws. Hi. <laughs> For the um, the headlight right there, we need that so we can detach the um, the hood latch. This is this big one. Mm hmm. Gotta take off this one. Yeah, I'll take those off after you're done. Next Okay. So right on the front of the car, there's one, two, three, four, five big bolts here. Let me pull this out. Mm -hmm. Take it, take it. Here you go. Right there. And that gives us more access to the... Yeah. So... <laughs> we're here getting ready for the bumper removal so remember once you take the grill off five bolts here now don't worry about the headlights yet so you need me to get a different not right now but here let me take that okay. put that right here okay so we got these five mm -hmm. 
And then we are over here on the fender. If they're here still, yep, they're still here. Oh, well, there's been modifications done to these, but there's one. Put in modifications. Modifications means someone's been messing, put, not putting the good stuff in here. So, we gotta take all these screws off, okay? Okay, come on. Yeah, here we go. Make sure you turn left, okay? How do I do it? Put it in there and turn left. Mm hmm. So, I got my nephew doing that side. While I work on this side. So, don't know the history on this car very much besides what the owner told me. Um, and he said he took care of it really well. And I can definitely see that. The car was definitely taken care of uh, until, until its demise. I think after he cracked the oil pan, he said that's when he just kind of gave up on the car. Which kind of made me a little sad, but at the same time happy because I get to we get to work on it now. So we are now the new owners of this vehicle. Which is kind of exciting. So down here, underneath the bottom, there's a bolt here that's really annoying. It's a 13. Oh, no, no, it's a Torx as well. Sorry. Yeah, it's a Torx. Um, but they're annoying to get to. Right down there. That holds these guys in place. Funny thing, most people don't put these back when they ever remove these down here. And these actually help the alignment of the bumper a lot more than the ones actually on top. But when you get aftermarket bumpers, they don't have them anymore. So, that's no bueno. Now, I don't want to break these because someone might take advantage of these. Wow, that's so janky. Guess what? I saw like a super rusty one. Yeah? It made the thing rusty. Oh. oh. I'm another rusty one. Okay. That looks super rusty. Yeah, the bolts are definitely on an odd angle. They're kind of sideways. Let me see. Let me see. Let me help you on this one so we can get it done a little quicker, okay? I can't do the top one. I can't see. It's okay. We got it. I can do the... Yeah. No, that's it. Oh. See? Well. All done. Hold on. Don't yank it down yet. We got to show them. Hmm. So now we got the whole bumper coming off. Now there's some stuff on here that's uh, wires. We have to concern ourselves with. <laughs> this guy had a front camera, by the way. I don't know why. <laughs> but he had a camera on the front of the car. <laughs> but that's all done. I don't know. I don't think you could see in front, I guess. Maybe, maybe you can't see very well. <laughs> I don't know, Papa. Like Auntie has to use glasses. Yeah, maybe, but maybe again, we don't know. Alright, so. Alright, so now front bumper is off. We got headlights now to take off, Alonzo. So, oh, wrong size. You want to do it? Yeah. Okay. While you do it, I'll explain what you're doing. Okay. So, that one has to come off. That one has to come off. Look down here. See right here? There's another one here. And another one right there. And the last one. Only two. That's it. There's four. Four in total, yeah. So, so where do I have to left. Yeah. <laughs> I try to make it look easy guys uh, but again if you guys ever want to take the front end off as easy as possible I kid you guys not 
take the front wheels off it makes life a thousand times so, easier back here now we got the whole front end re removed if you guys have a 1.8 t same procedure except for one thing this right here this is a little different this is the secondary radiator hose line um, which you guys will see when you start taking that down just unclip it and it comes right off don't worry about that papa don't worry about it no no don't worry about it it's uh, just a little bit of coolant um, so now we're gonna give you guys an inspection of the front end so you guys can see that so come over here stand right here so we can watch okay So, I'm going to get you guys over here uh, so you guys can see what we're looking at. So now, down here in front of the engine bay, uh, you have obviously your AC lines, so one and two lines, uh, your power steering pump, your AC compressor, your alternator, your secondary air injection right here pump, uh, your vacuum system for that right here. And actually, this is the vacuum system for this uh, idle valve right here. This valve is actually for, uh, I forgot to talk about this one earlier. It's a, it's a throttle plate valve. Um, this is vacuum actuated. Uh, these are notorious for failing or for flapping really bad over the years. And what this does is when you're at an idle, uh, this cuts the amount of uh, air going into the engine to create more lower and torque for you. <laughs> Once you open it, it pretty much opens up the whole engine and then gives you full power. Um, but it's more horsepower than torque once this flapper opens up. Um, so that's what you guys need to know about that part right there in your, in your car. So this is all your piping. This is the secondary air injection piping here. Um, this is what that controls this vacuum line. Um, down here there's another solenoid. Uh, I don't know what that one controls. We'll have to figure that one out later. Uh, this is the upper radiator hose. The lower one. No, no, this is the lower radiator hose. This is the upper radiator hose. Um, oh, there's your uh, oil filter housing right here. Uh, then we go right over here to the left, and there's your little secondary radiator right there. The little baby radiator. And that's what... Um, we're gonna learn how to delete out of this whole car when we get to that point. Uh, the hood sensor is this guy right here. This is the hood sensor. You need that so if you want to set your alarm. Whew, it is hot today. Holy smokes. And it's hot when you take out all the fireworks. Yeah. I guess you finally figured out what you wanted to do. Help us. So. Hey! I told you, watch out. Don't worry about getting dirty. That's what you're here for. So, um, looking and inspecting the uh, this, this side over here, um, this belt is already rotted. The thing is, I'm more concerned about is, is the engine seized, or are these pulleys seized, and not the engine? So I'm very, very curious about that as well. So we'll hopefully get to that down the road when we start pulling this engine out, because um, that's very interesting um, to find out. Because yeah, this stuff, you can see there's a lot of rust building up in here. Uh, there was water in here. You guys can see this. This is oxidation on aluminum, and that's because of water. So I'm curious what actually happened to this car. So the next step here is to uh, detach the axles. The axles are going to be the first thing to remove off of here. Um, detach the exhaust manifold. Does it pass through the large one? The secondary radiator is not sequential. It's actually, uh, it actually just kind of like a, what's the word? It's um, 
it's like a side radiator. It literally just sits on the side. If you guys can see, there's two lines right here. See this line right here and this line right here. They all they go down this way, and they they feed off of the main lines right here. They don't have like a sequential. That's why I think they're just useless. Uh, we just have to go to a bigger front radiator, and that would solve that problem. And we won't have to rock that radiator at all. So we got to take out the battery tray. Once the battery tray is removed, this will give us access to the um, to the shifter pendulum and all that. So we can detach that, uh, detach all the clutch stuff over here, and then we're going to be able to remove the axles. It's definitely a possibility that it could be hydro locked. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. Again, might be hydro locked. It might just have seized. Uh, seized accessories here it might have a failed chain if a chain fails um, the head can just uh, the head can hit the um, the piston is just right to lock the lock the engine so um, so that could be a thing uh, again it could have a seized engine we don't know we don't know what is wrong with this car and that's what's so exciting because every time we keep digging, digging a layer, taking a layer off of it, it gets better and better. And it's honestly getting more exciting for me because I'm noticing more things that are broken. And then I'm noticing things that we can actually do to it to make it so much better. So, it's, it's really neat. It's pretty neat. And we get more dirt and things. Yep, and get more dirt and things. So, the next step here is to remove the battery tray. Bless you. Thank you. Welcome. And that uses a 10 millimeter. Just removed the battery tray. And yeah, I mean, it's got a decent amount of stuff in here. So the next very, very, <laughs> the next very, very hard thing to do on these cars is removing the harness. The wire harness on these things are such a headache. Because you have everything intertwined down here and up here, it's it's just no fun. <laughs> pinching, <laughs> pinching at Al's garage. <laughs> Can't even say your name? No, he said it differently, Papa. <laughs> so Listen. we got to get here, pulling out the secondary water harness, water pump. So. This whole harness right here is one piece. Okay, Papa, go. Um, the secondary air injection pump right here has to come out. Now we have to remove a lot of this stuff to actually get the harness out um, because a lot of stuff is in the way. So. We're not retaining the AC in this car, so the AC is going away. We're building a race car, so no race car needs AC. But race cars need heaters, so we gotta make sure we keep make sure that works. So I gotta take off lower radiator hose, upper radiator hose, and then unbolt this for the lines. Take that off, and that off, and this whole thing will come right off. So, we'll grab a... <laughs> you guys are funny. What you guys are going to see right now is oil leaks beyond belief because no one is putting the effort in maintaining all the simple little things that can prevent this 
ever. This is really bad. But it's really cool so you guys can see that. So right over here, you guys can see all that oil build up. Look on the transmission. I mean, that's a lot of oil um, building up there. And I mean, it's layer, it's caked on here. So you guys can see that. That's just all build up. Mainly probably because there's probably a leaky valve cover gasket. Um, Yeah, it's probably only the valve cover casket and the PCV system that would cause it. Yeah, the PCV was also leaky right here. So you guys see that? See that grime? That's for part of your PCV system right there. And it's leaky. So that is what, you know, causes so much buildup. And you guys can see here's a secondary water pump. And this is why you got to replace it very often. Uh, I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but these need to be replaced at least every few years. Like I say, every two to four years replace these guys because they get notoriously leaky right here in these corners and this is what you get and you'll see all across this whole entire line is just covered in coolant um, not a good thing I mean it's not good to have leaks like this especially on a VR6 since they run a lot hotter than a stock you know than a 1.8 T or a 2.0 so and then that can cause other fun issues if you have a leaky um, water pump it can squirt water around here cause you know a lot of fun issues there um, big old spider um, so yeah that's just part of the issue there that we see so far Uh, David Kane, that can actually be both of those things can be part of the issue. That's a very, very good observation. And yes, that is a possible outcome. Um, just by just by looking at what we're looking at, that's definitely a possible outcome. Okay, so before we do anything else, we got to take some pictures. So give me a second here. We definitely have to have some before and after pictures. Hey, babe. So we're back, and so we took off the main harness. Uh, you're going to need to take off the top intake manifold. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight bolts for that. Unplug these six wires and the main tray. If you go down this way, there's a sensor right here. You guys can see that. That sensor is the last sensor on this side of the car. Right there. Uh, for this harness to come out. Then we go down here below. We have the alternator. We have a 13 and 8 uh, clip here and a clip here for the AC. Pull that over. You got your oil pressure line. Uh, I think this is another crank sensor or a knock sensor. Not 100% sure. This orange one. Uh, that is definitely, I know this one is definitely a crank sensor. It's always the gray ones are crank. Um, then you have all your um, SAI uh, wiring that goes here. Your coolant temp sensor. Uh, your upper radiator hose, lower radiator hose. All that comes off. We got rid of the secondary radiator. Um, all that's unplugged. We got the ignition coil. All the main wiring that was here just pulled down and down this way and out and just move everything over to the right. Uh, we unbolted the 313 bolts for the shifter linkage. Uh, the 13 right here and the 13 for the ground right there. And everything again pulls right over to the right. Once you're done with that and you move everything out of the way, make sure you remove the shifter pendulum which is a 13 as well. You're going to need to get a 13 wrench and a 13 socket down here to get rid of this brake uh, or this brace and then you'll be able to take these two 13s for the slave cylinder out of here and that should give you full access to get the engine ready to pull out the last thing 
is actually the um, the the four bolt or wait hold on one two three four like four or five bolts that hold the exhaust manifold to the actual downpipe of or the headers to the car those all have to be unbolted um, to get this portion of the car out and then we're gonna get down to the axles you have two of them uh, each have six bolts attached to them using triple squares um, hardware you have to unbolt them you don't need to uh, move them out of the way just unbolt them and just they'll fall as you uh, as you take things off um, let's see where else where, what else what else what else um, oh over here just make sure you unplug the power steering lines right here I mean uh, fuel lines which are pressurized right here uh, they probably don't have any pressure in them yep they're dry so you make sure you unplug these so when you pull the engine out you don't yank them out they just come along for the ride right here those two lines So that should be done for that. Nothing else is attached to the car. These are just coolant lines. Those are not attached to the car, uh, to the engine itself. Same with the power steering line. It's not attached. Just make sure you un unbolt uh, or unbolt it from here, or just take off the clamp. Same with this one. Unbolt it. One thirteen. There's another thirteen down the side. That should free everything up. And then remove the pendulum mount, aka dog bone. And then you got your two motor mounts, a cherry picker, and pull this sucker out. So that's what we're going to do, and we're going to show you how to do that next. So we got the engine out. Again, very, very straightforward. Not a lot of overly complicated. It's just like a 1.8T, but with more room. That is crazy. I know it's kind of weird to say that, but it's, there's a lot more room to get things done on a VR6. I was able to unbolt the exhaust manifold from the top with no issues. Uh, motor mount is tightness is kind of the same on this side, same over here on the driver side. The motor mount was exactly the same, same with the dog bone. Nothing crazy to learn. The hardest part for me out of this entire uh, part uh, DIY was the engine harness. Uh, the fuel injector one was actually the hardest one to remove because you have to remove the intake manifold to do that. Showed you guys how to do that, couple bolts and done. Uh, so we took that all out, now we're over here with the engine out. Now, the first problem that I just found was this right here. Uh, this main bracket is damaged, so we have to get this uh, motor mount bracket replaced. So this motor That's mount bracket has to get replaced no matter what. I see a lot of rust on the pulleys. So that leads me to believe that this had a lot more other issues not only just oil starvation possibly but <clears throat> very very poor maintenance because you can see this belt <coughs> is coming apart um, so I'm um, gonna probably cut this belt off because I probably won't even be able to move that tensioner honestly uh, we'll see right now in a little bit um, let's see now we got this guy I can't turn the engine so <coughs> we might have a seize block <clears throat> but we won't know until we take the transmission off because taking the transmission off will uh, prevent us from making sure that the flywheel is not damaged number one and it'll just take that factor out of there so that way um, transmission is not preventing the engine from turning because what can happen is that <clears throat> an engine uh, flywheel can be damaged or maybe a synchro is damaged one or the other so I'll be able to move it all into gear and move the car forward and back but if the flywheel has failed I can't turn it but me but the gears are destroyed on the inside that's a possibility we don't know yet um, so that's one one idea that we have going on um, another one one of you guys thought is uh, possibly one of the cam followers or the cam chain has failed or another one another idea is that it jumped a couple teeth and the valves are pretty much bent and lock the head and the pistons all together 
again, all great ideas and theories, um, but we won't know until we get to that point. So next we're gonna do a full teardown. We're gonna do a transmission separation first, which isn't very hard on these cars <coughs> or these engines. Same like a Mark, uh, like a 1.8T. Just follow the bolts around the transmission. That's pretty much straight. That's it. You know, uh, I gotta get this uh, engine on a stand or on a <coughs> on a dolly, so it doesn't swing around as much, and start working on removing it. Um, this thing is extremely grimy. Oh my gosh, this transmission is. I mean, this engine is dirty. So I can't wait to start rebuilding it and freshening this whole entire setup up because it's ugly and gross. Um, right here is the timing cover. This is where your chains are all uh, located. So right here. Ignition coil. All the sensors for that. This is where your secondary water pump chills at. The main water pump is actually right here. This guy right here is your main water pump. And it's uh, one of the easiest things you can do on this car, actually, is swap out the water pump on these. Because uh, they're so easy. They're just right there. Um, no timing involved. Um, we're going to have to pull out the fuel rail. So this rail is held in by one, two, three, four bolts. And whatever this thing is has to come off with it. And then all this will come off. We'll take off the second half of the intake manifold. We got boxes over here on the left to keep everything nice and tight. Uh, keep all our stuff that we have over here organized. You know, and that way we have everything ready to go and be put away as we work on this whole engine. Uh, the next DIY that you guys are gonna see is a full degreasing, a cleaning of this entire engine bay. We're going to move the engine harness. We're going to actually take the engine harness as much of it out of the car or out of the way. So we can relocate a lot of stuff for shaving purposes. So first is the engine bay to clean up because it needs it. We're probably going to drop the whole suspension and everything underneath off this, off this car and refresh all of that. Um, and then get everything else going uh, back as we work on this as well. So... <coughs> Uh, thank you again, everybody, for tuning in to this episode of Pinchy Isles Garage. You guys have been awesome. And thank you. If you want to become a Patreon member, please go on the link down below. Very straightforward. And be a supporter. Only five bucks a month will help us create more content like this for Pinchy Isles Garage. All right. Thank you and have a wonderful day.